Well, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope you're ready to learn a little bit of English. I hope you uh enjoy learning about rudeness or rude people. Uh we'll start in about 32 seconds. Let me double check to make sure everything is working. Fun to see everyone here after a bit of a break. Sounds good. We'll start in about 16 seconds. Uh and hopefully you remember how to learn English and hopefully I remember how to teach English. You don't forget that quickly how to do something I don't think but we will see. Three, two, one. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this English lesson about rudeness. Rudeness describes when people behave in a way that's not very nice or not very kind. It's not nice to be rude but as humans sometimes we are rude to each other. I'm even rude sometimes, believe it or not. So, in this English lesson, I'll look at different words and phrases that we use when talking about rudeness. How we describe people who are rude, the effects of that rudeness um and describing in general why something is rude or how it makes someone feel. So, once again, I hope you're ready to learn English. Welcome to this English lesson about rudeness. Hey, so it's been a little while and I do wanna just double check to make sure the audio is working. As you know, I took a couple weeks off. I didn't really take two weeks off. I just didn't do YouTube for two weeks. Um I had a lot of other things going on. If you watched my other lesson from this morning on my short video or short English lesson channel, I explained a little bit that uh I had to get some personal stuff done like income tax, Uh and I had to um kind of prep quickly to teach an additional class at school. So, I'm a little busier than normal but it's just until the middle of June. So, I think things will go well. It's really fun to see all of you. It was fun to chat a little bit before. Let me say hi to Ralph, Lolly Lolly, Wanda. Thanks to Dave for being here. Hello to Vitor and Freddie Wolf, Mode Eggs, Eugene from Automation Secure Home. Uh Lolly Lolly. I'm probably saying names twice again because I do start to do that. Hi to Isa and Yulia and Jocelyn and Enrique Enrique. Peter Hemin. Hi to everyone. Hi to Ruslan. Good to see you there as well. Um it's just good to see people come together. Remember this English lesson is about rudeness um but it's not rude for you to have conversations in English while I'm teaching. If we were in a classroom, it would be rude if you talked, if the students talked while I was teaching but in this situation, feel free to have good English conversations with each other while I talk about rudeness and once again, if you do have a question, I will pause every 10 minutes or so and take questions from the form that is linked in the description below. So, let me just check the audio one more time. This is one of those days where I don't feel like teaching the lesson. I just feel like talking. Maybe I should do a live stream like that sometime where I just talk because I feel like talking but we should really get started. Let's get started on this lesson about rudeness. So, the first word I have for you is inconsiderate. When you are inconsiderate, you do something that maybe helps you but you aren't thinking about how it will affect other people. Here's a good example. This might this might be a little bit of a Canadian example. When we shovel our driveways, when we clean our driveways, the snow needs to go somewhere. If my driveway was beside my neighbor's driveway and I shoveled my snow onto my neighbor's driveway, that would be inconsiderate because it helps me. My driveway is nice and clean but I just put all the snow on my neighbor's driveway. So, that would be inconsiderate. Another example of inconsiderate would be sometimes we sit down to eat and one of my kids is thirsty and we don't have cups on the table. So, they go and get a cup for themselves but they don't get a cup for the other people. That would be inconsiderate. The opposite would be considerate. When you're considerate, you think about other people when you do certain things insensitive. When you are insensitive, 
it usually means you say something without thinking about how it will make the other person feel. A good example would be this. Um let's say that a friend of yours was just in a car accident and they found it really traumatic. They didn't get injured and then if you showed them a video that you thought was funny of a car accident on your phone. If you were like, oh, hey, look at this video of a car accident. That would be insensitive because your friend is is kind of upset because they just had a car accident a while ago. So, it would be insensitive to show them that. So, usually it's when you say something or do something without thinking about the other person and how they might feel. Offensive. So, this is not true. <laughs> All Canadians are not mean but it would be offensive if someone said, I hate Canadians. All Canadians are mean. Whenever you say something that is just mean to another person or a group of people, it's offensive. So, if you say something that's racist, it's offensive. If you say something about a group of people that isn't true, it's offensive. It offends people. It's not nice to say things that are offensive and by the way, all Canadians are not mean. Some Canadians are mean though but that's just the way life is, isn't it? Some people are nice. Some people are not. So, it's offensive when you say something that isn't true as well about a group of people or about a person. Impolite. So, when you are impolite, it's the opposite of being polite. It's when you don't say thank you when someone gives you something. It's when you take the biggest cookie. If someone offered you a cookie and if you always take the biggest cookie, that's impolite. We are always trying to teach our children to be polite. We're trying to teach our kids to say please and to say thank you. To share with each other. To not always take the biggest cookie. So, when you do something like that, when you take the biggest cookie, you are being impolite. When someone gives you something and you don't say thank you, you are being impolite. Not good to be impolite. Bullying. Let's talk about a few actions that occur that are considered very rude. Some of these are even mean. So, rude is a little less than mean. Like, mean is worse than being rude I think. But bullying. Bullying happens a lot between children. It's when one child or a group of children are just not very nice to another child. Maybe they steal their lunch. Maybe they yell at them at recess like in this picture. Maybe they every day just aren't very nice to them or call them names. All of that would be considered bullying and all of that would be very very rude. Extremely rude. Is how I would describe that. <laughs> Lying. It is considered rude to lie. You shouldn't lie to your boss. You shouldn't lie to your spouse. You shouldn't lie in general and I don't want to get into the details um, but I do believe all humans lie. I don't mean to offend any of you. I don't I hope that's not offensive for me to say that but I'm pretty sure all humans lie at some point in their life. Maybe even during their day or during the week. People do lie. Um if you think people don't lie, I think you might be a little naive. But yes, it's considered very rude to lie. If you call in sick to work but you're not actually sick, that's kind of rude because it might mean other people at work have to do your job um while you're sitting around at home doing nothing. But if you are sick, if you're actually sick, you should call in. Loudness. So, there's a couple different ways to be rude with loudness. You can talk loudly. Even in a grocery store, it's considered impolite or rude to talk very loudly. It would be impolite to yell at your children in a public place. Um it would be impolite or rude to go camping and bring a really loud radio and play really loud music. That would be considered quite rude in a campground. People come to a campground to enjoy nature and if you just play your music really, really loud, that would be very, very rude. So, loudness is definitely, yes, either your voice or playing music or anything else. Um if you were to, I'm trying to think of another example. Oh, 
Sometimes young people put really loud exhaust systems on their cars. So, when they drive, the car's like super, super loud. Kind of rude to do that. Kind of rude. Depends on your perspective though a little bit. Staring. So, this is also a bit of a cultural lesson. Whenever I do lessons about how people behave or what kind of behavior is good or bad, it is really a lesson about Canada and North America. In other cultures or other countries, some of these these things might not be rude. Staring is definitely rude in Canada. If you go and work out at the gym, while I'm lifting weights at the gym, I don't want someone to stare at me. If I'm riding on the bus, I don't want someone to stare at me. When you stare at someone, you look at them intently. I think the last time I taught the word stare, I did this. That's a me acting out what staring looks like. Um so, it's considered quite rude um to stare at someone. Interrupting. <laughs> this is this is one of the rude things that I do sometimes. Interrupting is when two people are talking and before someone is able to finish their sentence, you start talking. It's not a very nice thing to do. Children often do this. We slowly over time teach children that interrupting is rude. That they should wait until there's a pause in the conversation before saying something. So, interrupting occurs when two or three people are talking and another person just starts talking when someone else isn't even done their sentence or done saying what they are saying. Um I have this in class sometimes. Some students will interrupt me while I'm talking up front. I don't appreciate it. I consider it rude. Quite rude actually. Hey, let's look at some questions here. Hopefully, they pop up. Yes, there they are. Let me have a sip of water. Let me say hi to the 267 people watching. Good to see all of you. I have noticed since I started doing the live lessons at 8.30 my time, Instead of 7.30, I've had a few less people and I've had a number of people let me know that the time doesn't work. So, hopefully, in about five weeks, we can go back to our normal time. But anyways, good to see all of you over there. I love seeing people chatting. I never lie, says Mode. That's a lie in itself. Of itself, yes. A little lie can sometimes be useful even if it's bad mannered. I I might have to agree with that but as a teacher, I cannot admit that I lie. I I am very much against lying. Um let's see. Flippo says hi to everybody. John says, oh, John Wedge is here. Good to see you, John. Um teacher Bob can imitate any sound in the world. I try, Ruslan. In fact, I still need to uh make a lesson where I imitate all the sounds. Mode Eggs uh sent me an idea a number of months ago and I haven't followed up on it. Uh let's see. Okay, let's get to the actual questions. We have six questions here. From Ruslan, hello, dear teacher Bob. I'm glad you are back. I wish you never meet rude people in your life. Have a nice weekend, sir. Yes, I wish the same but I just think that's not quite possible, is it? There's just too many rude people in the world and I always think when I meet a rude person, I'm annoyed with them if they're rude but I always think maybe they're having a really bad day. Maybe that's why they're being rude. Maybe there's a good explanation as to why that person is being rude and then I I try to understand them a bit better. From Renata, hello, Bob. I have no question about today's topic. I just want to say that I hope no one is ever rude to you or anyone in your family. You are a wonderful human being. I try my best to be a wonderful human being. I am not always a wonderful human being. Bob the Canadian has all the same emotions as other people. And in fact, I am rude sometimes. I do interrupt people when they're talking Um, and then there's a couple more that uh, I'll talk about as we go through the lesson. So, thank you for the kind wishes, Renata. Um I'm hoping that I'm hoping the world can become void of rudeness someday. That means no rudeness at all. Sali, is someone asking about the monthly salary or age considered rude? A little bit. So, I did a lesson on this a while ago. Um I would not ask someone how much they make at work. If my brother had a job and got a new job, 
I might say, oh, are you making more money? Does the new job pay better? But I wouldn't say how much are you getting paid per hour or how much are you getting paid uh per year? I wouldn't I wouldn't ask that. The person might tell me. Um age depends on how well you know the person. When my mom has a birthday, I'll say how old are you now? Because I often forget how old my mom is. Um but if it's just a person at work, unless they tell me their age, I wouldn't necessarily ask their age. Uh let's see here. From Yarrow. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Missed your live streams. Thank you. I take rude people personally. How do you cope with that? Thanks. Welcome back. Well, I get rude comments. If that is where I get or where I experience the most rudeness, sometimes on my videos, someone will post a rude comment and here's what I do. I click the button that deletes the comment. I always feel like if someone took the time to leave a rude or mean comment, they have enough problems in their life. Something's making them angry or annoyed with people. So, I'm just going to delete the comment and and go on my way. Yeah, I don't take it personally. Especially on YouTube. In real life, it's harder though, right? From Rabiz. Hi, from Kurdistan. Dear Mr. Bob, though my question is out of topic, but want to know whether you can swim or not. Yes. When I was a kid, my mom took me for swimming lessons. I think my older brother and sister went before me and then me and my younger sister went at the same time. We went to a pool and someone taught us to swim. That's what a lot of uh, Canadian kids do. You have swimming lessons in the summer as a kid. It's very important to have swimming lessons in Canada because if you ever look at a map, Canada is a country of water. There are lakes and ponds and rivers and streams everywhere in Canada. I live on a river. When I drive to school, I go across two or three bridges. Um if you yeah, look at a map sometime. Go to Google map. Google maps and have a look. There are many, many bodies of water in Canada. So, it's important that everyone knows how to swim. So, from Clive. Hi, Bob. How's it going today? Good. Can you help to explain what the what literally means and how to use it? Thank you so much. So, a little bit off topic. But I will explain it and I'll try to include rudeness in it. When you say that someone literally um gave you a million dollars, it means they actually gave you a million dollars. Like if you say that it was literally uh it it was literally raining so hard that my umbrella broke that you're telling it literally means that something actually happened that There are facts supporting it. It was literally 25 degrees Celsius yesterday. So, I'm not exaggerating. I mean that it is it was exactly that temperature. From Lolly Lolly, bonjour. Juste une petite question or question. How should I pronounce it? Juste une petite question. Do you often use a white lie? Merci. I will I will not admit in on YouTube whether I lie or not. (laughs) If you ever talk to me personally, I'll let you know but let's all just believe that Bob the Canadian never lies. Let's believe that. I like how Mode answered it. I never lie and that is in of itself a lie. Anyways, let me check where I am and have a sip here. Let me say hi to the 286 people watching. If you're new here, uh you should hit this subscribe button down here. And you'll get notified when I do a new lesson. Let me take care of this pinned comment here. There we go. Let me go to no display and check over where I'm at and let's get back to the lesson. Yes, let's do that. Questions. Nope. Slides is what we want. Not minding your own business. Now, in English, when you don't mind your own business, it means you are asking someone a lot of questions about their life or what they are doing. We have another word for this and it's the word nosy. Sometimes people are nosy. Sometimes, I'm not sure if my mom is watching this but mums, I think are allowed to be nosy. Mums are allowed to do this and it's not rude but if I was to ask someone a lot of questions about what they're doing at work, And if it wasn't my job, they could say, mind your own business. They would think it's rude of me. It would be rude for me to say, 
oh, you're coaching basketball. Um, are you doing this, this and this? And in the last game, I noticed this but you should probably change this. They might say, it would be rude for them to say this though. They might say, hey, mind your own business. So, speaking directly can also be rude but yes, trying to tell someone how to do something or asking someone a lot of questions would be considered very rude. So, yes, don't be nosy and you should mind your own business. Making fun of someone. So, this again happens a lot with children. If someone wears um maybe they wear funny looking shoes or they have a funny hat or maybe they get a haircut and other kids don't think it looks nice. They might make fun of that person. In English, when you make fun of someone, you laugh at them. You might point at them. You might be like, ha, 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 Bob the Canadian, he has a funny haircut or ha, ha, Bob the Canadian, he has a gigantic nose. Like that would be rude, mean, um, I do have a bit of a big nose though. I'm allowed to say I have a bit of a big nose. <laughs> I think it's because I'm from northern Europe. I think my ancestors probably all had big noses. Anyways, making fun of someone uh is considered rude, impolite, mean. There's a number of ways to describe it and generally it happens with kids but adults do it as well. They just don't usually say it to the person. They usually make fun of someone behind their back. So, they talk about someone when they're not there. That's also rude by the way. Being disrespectful. So, being disrespectful is rude. Um sometimes students are disrespectful. Sometimes students don't want to do their work or sometimes students will say something to a teacher that's not appropriate um and that's very, very disrespectful and very, very rude. Sometimes I'll have to meet with a parent and I'll have to say your your son or daughter is actually quite rude to their classmates. They say uh things that aren't appropriate in the classroom. So, you need to be respectful and if you are disrespectful, it is not a very, very nice thing. Very rude. Gossiping. So, this is something that adults might do more than kids. Maybe the same. This is when you talk about someone when they aren't there and it also involves maybe saying things that aren't true about that person. So, two of you might meet for coffee later today and you might talk about me and you might say, you know, Bob the Canadian took two weeks off and he said he's teaching an extra class but I'm not sure if that's true or not. Like, when you start to tell lies or exaggerate something about someone that isn't true, that's when you are gossiping and it's when you spread stories about someone. Not a nice thing to do. Very, 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 very rude. Very rude. Being late. So, um I'm not usually late. So, this is one of the things that um by the way, if this lesson seems similar to the lesson on pet peeves, they do overlap a little bit. Pet peeves are things that annoy um someone about other people. So, rudeness and pet peeves kind of go together. So, one of my pet peeves is I don't like it when people are late. I am almost always on time. If we have a meeting at school, if we have a meeting at work, I'm usually one of the first people there and then I think it's rude when people come late. I hope my coworkers aren't watching (laughs) but I think it's a pretty standard thing to say that being late is very, very rude and somewhat impolite. Uh littering. So, littering is not a nice thing. Some of you because of where I shoot my videos might think that Canada is a beautiful country with no litter anywhere. That's usually because I choose to make videos where it's nice and tidy but when I go for a walk, I've mentioned this a few times. When I go for a walk, the ditch along my road has lots of litter. There's lots of trash. There's lots of garbage. It's very, very annoying and I think it's rude when people are driving along and they finish their coffee and they throw the cup out the window. I think that's very rude. It's rude to the people who have to see the litter and it's rude because we all need to work hard to take care of this planet. So, littering, very rude, quite rude. Tailgating. So, there are a number of things that people do while driving that can be considered rude. 
Uh, tailgating is when you drive too closely behind someone else. You should leave some space when you're behind someone just in case the person in front needs to stop quickly or for some other reason. But tailgating is considered rude. Um cutting someone off is considered rude. Do you remember the lesson on driving? There are a few things people do. So, if you drive past someone and pull really quickly in front of them, that's very very rude. I consider it rude when someone drives too slowly. The other day, I was driving to school and the speed limit is 80 kilometers an hour and I usually do about 90. That's okay in Canada. You won't get a ticket for going five or 10 kilometers an hour over and the person in front of me was doing 60. That was I thought that was a little bit rude. So, a few things you can do while driving that are considered rude. One is tailgating someone. Swearing. So, this is an interesting one because it depends where you are. When I was younger, when I was uh 17, 18, 19, uh in the summer, I would help build houses. I was a construction worker and it was very common for people to swear at work. So, while we were building a house or a barn, my coworkers would swear and it was kind of normal. At school, it's not normal. It would be very rude for someone to swear at school. In fact, it would be worse than rude. It would be inappropriate. Teachers do not swear. Students should not swear at school. If you're wondering what swearing is, it's using bad words. It's using uh what in English we call four letter words. There's a few of them. One starts with F and ends with K. I think you might know that one. Um but it is very rude to swear in certain places. If you are in a public place, a restaurant, if you are on the train, it would be considered somewhat rude to swear a lot. People do swear every once in a while but if every tenth word is a swear word and you're doing that in public where other people can hear you, it would be considered quite rude. Taking credit. So, this one, this might take a little time to explain. When you take credit, I mean, it's rude when you take credit for something you didn't do. In English, when you take credit for something, you say, I did it. So, if you were to say, Bob, who um who writes your English lessons for you? I could say, I write my own English lessons. I have ideas and I create them. But if someone else was doing the work and I said, I did it, that would be taking credit for something I didn't do. This does sometimes happen at work. Not my work. Very rare at my work but sometimes you will do something at work and someone else will tell the boss they did it. Someone will take credit for something you did. Not very nice at all. Very, very, very rude I would say. Probably one of the rudest things uh, you can do at work is to take credit for something you didn't do. If Joe does a great job on a project And you go to the boss and say, I did that project. It's it's a lie as well, right? Um if you take credit for it, very rude. Don't take credit for things that you don't do. Blocking the aisle. This happens in our one grocery store because it's very, very small. The aisles are very, very narrow. Um you should always be aware of people in front and behind you. If someone is behind you, you shouldn't have your grocery cart blocking one side of the aisle with you standing on the other side of the aisle. You should make sure that you leave some space so that people can get through. So, very rude to block the aisle. Even more rude is this did happen to me a few months ago now. Someone had AirPods in and they were playing their music really loudly and they were blocking the aisle. So, when I said, excuse me, can I get through? They couldn't hear me. So, they were rude twice. Once because they were blocking the aisle uh and the second rudeness would be that they couldn't hear me. Um by the way, I should have included that slide maybe. I don't have that one but sometimes it's rude when people have their music so loud they can't hear the people around them. Sniffling. So, this is an interesting one. Any signs of sickness are now considered very rude. If I go to work and I have a cough or a sore throat uh, or if I'm sniffling. By the way, sniffling is this. It's a gross sound like (laughs) where you're you're always pulling air in through your nose because you have lots of snot in your nose or you're blowing your nose a lot. 
any visual signs of sickness are considered quite rude. In Canada, I'm not sure what it's like in your countries but because of the pandemic, if you are sick, you generally stay home from work now very quickly. Um if you have a bad cough like <laughs> if you have a stuffed up nose, um any sign of sickness, it's considered rude to go where other people are. I would say before the pandemic, this was not necessarily the case. If you were sick, you were just sick, people would stay far away from you. But now at school, if a student or teacher comes in and you can tell they're sick, uh people consider that very, very rude. Like just stay home. If you're sick, stay home. Double dipping. So, I don't know if you're familiar with this one but if I in Canada, I'm not sure what it's like in the rest of the world. If I have a chip and we have hummus or salsa or something to dip the chip in, if I take a chip and dip it in and take a bite and if I still have part of the chip here and I dip again, that's considered rude because the chip has touched my mouth. People don't like it if you dip again, if you double dip. So, if you have crackers or chips and you uh you dip, eat and then you with the piece that you bit. So, you have half a cracker now. If you dip again, that's considered rude and we call it double dipping. So, if you go to a party and you are eating food, maybe you're eating pitas or you have nans or some sort of um bread or cracker or chip that you're dipping, dip once and eat. Don't dip again. You can get a new chip and dip that. That's fine. That's not double dipping. It's when you use the same chip or cracker twice. Very rude to double dip. Ask uh, Dave the Canadian if it's rude to double double dip. He'll he'll tell you. Okay, let's go into members only mode. I do remember how to do these live lessons. I do wanna say hi to all of the 342 people who are watching. That is awesome but I do need to find the button here for members only. Save. There we go. Say, I had to click the save button if you're wondering what I was saying. Um so, first of all, thank you to you all of you who are members. I will answer questions directly from the chat while I continue with questions from right here. Uh let me see here. I'll get a new question up. And thank you for being members. Thank you for being members even when I'm not making videos. That was very helpful. And I do wanna say thank you to my members and everyone else for watching a lot of my videos while I took time off. That was really, really nice to see that I was still getting um people watching my English lessons while I took some time off. So that off. That was awesome. Anyways, thanks for being members. Um let's see here. Katerina. Sunny day, my dear, dear teacher Bob. It is here as well but it was really cold last night. What what was the worst rudeness that has happened to you in your life? A, a few fixes there. Not a big deal. Do you have are you rude sometimes sweet weekends? So, the worst thing I don't know. I think I don't wanna go into too many details but if you ever have a situation where someone tells someone something about you that isn't true, that would be the worst and that's happened to me once or twice. I think that happens to everybody in life um but uh, yes, that would be probably it and am I sometimes rude? Yes, sometimes when I'm in one room, I yell uh I ask a question very loudly from one room to another room in my house and Jen and my kids sometimes think that's rude. Mofan says, hi, Mofan. How do you handle people who are rude to you? Well, if it's in the comments below a video, I just delete it. If it's in real life, I find that it doesn't happen very often. I think my personality stops people from being rude to me. I have a very assertive teacher-like personality. Does that make sense? So, because I'm a teacher, I'm always in charge of a classroom and I think that carries over into other parts of my life. So, I think my personality kind of stops people from being too rude. So, anyways, let's look at a question from the chat. Mode says, double dipping is a pet peeve of mine. It's only fine if you're not sharing the dip or salsa and have it all for yourself. Yes, then I will double dip. If I have a little thing of salsa or hummus and I'm eating by myself, I will definitely double dip. 
Freddy says, Bob, sometimes we can accidentally lie without doing it on purpose. Yes. So, when we realize and we want to catch up for our lie, we risk sinking even more. So, it's sometimes better to let it to let it go, isn't it? Yes, definitely. One of the things about lying is lying can cause more lies. So, you tell one lie and then you tell another lie and another lie. So, sometimes it's better if you tell a little white lie or you tell a lie just to let it go. Madi says, and don't lick your fingers and dip them again. Yes, don't do that. Even just licking your fingers would be considered kind of rude here in Canada. Flippo says, we missed you. Hope your throat is okay now. Yes. By the way, I did start my break because I was losing my voice. That was why I initially started the break and then I was enjoying getting other stuff done so much. I just kept the break going. So, thanks, Flippo. Zeev, hi, the greatest teacher, Bob. How is the weather over there? So, it was very cold last night but it's supposed to be sunny with a high of 20 degrees Celsius today. So, I'm looking forward to going for a walk later this afternoon once I'm done teaching. Let's see here. John Wedge, hello, Bob and friends. I haven't been able to watch the lives for a long time due to the day to day rush. Happy to be here today. No question today, just listening and having fun with all of you. Good to see you, John. We did miss you, by the way. It's good to have you back. Zeev says, is it rude to ask for your religion? So, it is rude a little bit to ask people what their religion is. Usually, you'll know. If someone wants you to know, they will tell you. So, that's how I would answer that question. Lolly, I think Japanese are the most polite people in the world. Do you agree? I have not been to Japan but I have met people who have immigrated to Canada from Japan and they are very kind and very polite. Madi, I believe some rude behaviors can be normal for others. Yes. And I think the example of the example I gave about how when I was a construction worker, it was normal for people to swear. Sometimes you're in situations where it's not rude to do a certain behavior. Good point, Madi. Key Park, when I speak English, maybe sometimes sound a little bit rude or impolite but I don't mean that. It makes me frustrated. Do you have any idea to fix it, Bob? Thank you. Use please and thank you a lot. An English sentence that is rude that has please or thank you will seem less rude and I totally understand what you're saying. Sometimes in the comments, someone will write something and initially, I will think it's rude but then I need to remember the person writing it doesn't know maybe how to say it politely. It might just be an English mistake and not rudeness. So, I would say those would be my suggestions because if I say, here's a good example. If I say to Jen, give me my keys. It's very rude. It's very direct. It's not a very nice way to say it but if I say, hey, can you please give me my keys and when she gives them to me, I say, thank you. It makes the whole conversation nicer. Mode says, I think it's important to realize language learners can sometimes sound a bit direct not because they're rude but because they still don't know how to express their opinion or desire in the nicest way. Exactly. That is a great uh, a great analysis of that mode. Sometimes when I'm speaking French, my French speaking partner will say, well, that's very direct or very rude. We wouldn't say it that way. Sometimes when you're speaking English, there might be a softer or nicer way to say it. Freddie Wolf. Thanks, Mode, by the way. That was a great summary of this situation. Freddie, when I see someone double dipping, I would find that gross and I would immediately stop eating. Yeah, me too. Or I would dip on the other side of the bowl if it was something I liked. (laughs) Yes. Lolly says, thanks, Bob. John says to Lolly, Korean are very polite people too. Uh, Eugene says, that's true. The Japanese are more pleasant than some other countries. I don't wanna get in too much of a comparison. At least we're comparing positive traits of different countries. Uh, Lolly says, ah, okay, thanks, John Wedge. Cool. Let me get back to the form. We'll do some questions from the form and then get back to the lesson. Baranana, hello, Bob. It's been a while. Do you reckon emotional blackmail is one kind of rudeness. I would say there's rudeness and then there's being mean and then there's things that are actually illegal um like they're crimes. So, I would say that that falls in the category of being mean and it could even be abusive. So, I would consider that more than rude. I would say that's definitely more than rude. 
Uh, Yulia has a non-rude question. What's the difference between a rocket and a missile? Are these words interchangeable? No. A rocket is generally something that's going to go to space whereas a missile simply flies through the air from one point to another. From Peter, we have, hi, Mr. Bob. I'm very happy you're back again. Your topic, it's amazing topic. Thank you. I know a lot of people have rude, some lying, I know a lot of people who are rude, some lying a lot, some talking loud. Thank you. Yes, talking loudly, I think is one of the things, I talk loudly a lot, so I'm probably guilty of this. But it's one of the things that I would say is rude. To be in a public place and to talk very, very loudly. Zeev thinks, I think British people are the most polite. Very polite as well. John says, on the other hand, I think we have a lot of polite people in the world. I do too, John. I think that's what I like the most about my YouTube viewers is I feel like I have very polite, kind people viewing my channel uh, and they're from every country in the world almost. Very cool. Uh, let's see here. John says, oh, Bob said better what I'm trying to say. I I just tried to word it differently. Uh, Eugene from Automation says, Bob, do you want to go the Infocom in Orlando on June 14 to 16 next month? No. Sounds fun but uh, that will be a busy time for me. I think that's the week we give students their exams. Lolly says, I agree, John Wedge. Vitor says, Bob's community is the most polite place on the internet. I do have to say thank you to Dave and remember Todd used to help out quite a bit as well. I think let me just I'm just clicking things while I'm talking. It's not working out. I'm going back to uh subscriber mode. I think one of the reasons I find most people quite polite on this channel uh is because Dave and Todd did have done a great job moderating the chat. I think the tone in the chat from the people who are there has always been very positive. I would have to thank Brent from Speak English with this guy uh for keeping the chat light as well when he comes to my live streams. Uh and uh, members, you guys are awesome. So, thank you for being members. We're gonna move back to the lesson now but uh, yes, thank you very much for being members and for helping support this channel. It does really help by the way. It uh helps me <laughs> pay for gas now. That's our our biggest family expense right now is probably gas for driving uh kids to work and school. My kids are getting older and they're getting jobs. So, that uh makes things a little busier. Hey, I'm gonna go back to the lesson. I will get back to questions in a bit. Let's finish the lesson off and then I'll finish off the questions and then I'll go to work. Here we go. Being critical. When you're critical of someone, it means you're telling them what they're doing wrong. When um one of my kids washes the dishes, if I say, hey, there's still food on this plate, um I'm being a little bit critical. Um it's more than that though. I think it would be if even when let me see, how would I describe being critical? It means you always think someone is doing something wrong and you rarely think they're doing it right. So, when I say good job or I say bad job, when I say good job, I'm being positive. When I say bad job, I'm being critical. Um sometimes it's okay to be critical but if you're always critical, uh it can be challenging. It can be difficult. Um some people have parents who never think the children as adults are making good decisions and they are very, very critical of them. Not very nice. Oh, Madi, member for 36 months. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Three years. That's amazing, eh? Um awesome. Thanks for thanks for being around. Um not helping clean up. So, this is considered rude in Canada. I'm not sure what it's like in your country but if I go to my sister's place for a meal, when we're done eating, I help clean up. When my family gets together here and we have a campfire, when we sit around a campfire, at the end of the evening, everyone helps clean up. We put out the fire, we put the chairs away, we pick up all the garbage. When you visit someone, at least in Canada, I think in most places in the world, it's polite to help clean up. If I go to um my brother-in-law and sister-in-law's place and I eat a big meal, and when the meal's done, I watch them clean up. That would be rude. It would be polite for me to say, hey, um 
I'll put a few things away. That's usually what I do or put the dishes in the dishwasher. Um I don't put the dishes in the dishwasher when we visit. I usually pick up, I usually put the peanut butter away and I put the bread away. I I do an easy job. Maybe I'm a little bit rude. Who knows? Uh arguing. Now, arguing can be fun. Some people like to argue. I have a good friend and we like to argue sometimes. Um but sometimes it's rude to argue. Um if the boss tells you to do something, it would be rude to argue with the boss, okay? Uh so again, arguing is when two people disagree and are talking about their disagreement. So, definitely, it can be considered rude to sometimes argue. Sometimes, it's not rude though. This is a tricky one because arguing can be fun. Um we teach students how to argue formally in a class. Like, it's more of a debate then but arguing can sometimes be rude. Talking about yourself. So, I do this a little bit but uh it can be rude. When you are having a conversation with someone, it's always best to ask them about their life and listen to what they're saying. It's not nice to have a conversation with someone where they just talk about themselves. So, sometimes I'll do this. I'll say to someone, how's it going? And they'll tell me how it's going and then I'll just start talking about myself. That's not always a great conversation. The best conversations are when you ask someone else about themselves and let them. It's not nice to, I I think I'm explaining this badly but if you know someone where whenever you talk to them, 90% of the conversation ends up being about them, that would be a little bit rude. Talking about yourself. And this is a similar one, bragging. So, if I was like, oh, look at the size of my muscles or I, I, um I'm trying to think of something to brag about. I I'm not this is not one of my faults. I don't brag. I talk about myself a lot but I bragging is when you say, oh, Jen and I grow more flowers than any other farm in Ontario. That's not true by the way but bragging is when you talk about yourself and you talk about the things you're good at repeatedly over and over again. Reaching. So, this is something we try to teach our kids not to do. Um In Canada, when you're having a meal, it's considered impolite or rude to reach across the table or reach in front of someone. You can't really see my hand but if I'm sitting here and my brother is sitting beside me. Here, let's go here. If I'm sitting here and my brother's sitting beside me and I reach over past my brother to grab something, that is considered rude. Um a better thing to do would be to ask someone to pass something. So, you would say, please pass the milk. Please pass the potatoes and they will hand it to you. So, reaching, a little bit rude. Budding. So, this is also called cutting in line or jumping the queue I think in Britain. Don't quote me on that. Uh in English, uh, a more informal term is simply budding. It's when there's a line of people and instead of going to the back of the line, you try to bud You try to get in the line. At our school, we have food at lunch four days a week and there's a line to buy the food and sometimes students try to bud. They try to cut in line. They try to jump the queue. Jump the queue? Is that what it is? I think so. Someone can verify that in the chat. Bad breath. So, I'm assuming this is different in different parts of the world. I don't know but I think most people in Canada will brush their teeth before they go to work. Uh and most of us have good oral hygiene, we would call it. That's the dentist term, good oral hygiene. It's not nice to have bad breath. It's not nice to work with someone who has bad breath. Um it can be very, very rude and uncomfortable to work with someone. So, again, bad breath is when you breathe out and it just doesn't smell good for some reason. Bad breath. So, we have burping, not going to make these sound effects and farting. Whenever I talk about burping and farting, it makes me giggle a little bit. Burping is something that in some places might not be rude. In Canada, it's definitely rude, I think, to burp. Especially if you burp quietly with your hand here. So, burping is when you've eaten some food and you um yeah, I don't want to you it's like 
you make the, you let air out of your stomach. In, I think if I was to burp quietly with my hand here, that would be okay. But if I was to burp like with my mouth wide open so it's really loud, that would be rude. Uh and farting is when air comes out the other end. <laughs> that, that's how I always describe it. The problem with farting is it also smells. So, it's rude to fart because people don't like the sound and people don't like the smell. Now, we talked about lying and how um everyone lies. I think farting is like lying. I think everyone in the world uh, does this at some point for sure. Yelling from another room. Uh so, this is something I do and uh I think it's a little bit rude. Sometimes I'll be in this room working and our kitchen is right beside and Jen will be in the kitchen and I will I will yell to Jen. I will say, hey, uh what time does one of the kids need to be at school tomorrow? And so, it would be more polite to get up and go to the same room Jen is in and quietly ask her but instead, I tend to yell. Maybe that's why I lose my voice a few times a year because I'm always yelling questions. Hey, what time are you going? I don't know. I can't think of an example question right now. Not answering a question. So, this is interesting. Some this happens more between parents and kids or teachers and students where you're talking to a child or a student and instead of answering your question, they ignore you. Ignoring someone can be very, very rude. If I say to a student, why are you late for class? And if they just walk by me and sit down without responding, that would be very, very rude. So, it's always good especially in those situations where an adult is in charge, you should answer the question. Ignoring someone I think would be considered quite rude. Hey, that's the formal part of the lesson done. I think I did that in the appropriate amount of time. Um I'm going to finish answering questions and then I will go to work. So, just give me a second here to find the next question. Zeev says, how's the weather over in your city? It's beautiful. Beautiful today. Uh high of 20 degrees Celsius and sunny. So, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um from Filippo. Hi, Bob. Or is it Filippo? Here in Italy, it's useful to do this in the traffic if someone does something wrong. It's very rude and I don't do it. Is it common in Canada? Thank you. So, in Canada, we use uh we put this finger up and we put all the other fingers down. I'm not gonna show you because it's rude and people do sometimes do that. Did I lose my focus there? No. Um sometimes people just honk that's another thing they'll do or sometimes they'll give someone the finger. Again, if you wanna look it up, I know in other countries, it might be these two fingers but in Canada, it's we simply put this finger up and all the other fingers down. So, like this but this one finger goes up (laughs) and that would be I just think it would be rude if I actually gave you the finger on a live stream. So, and it does happen. Yes, people get angry. Um Hobart, hi, teacher Bob. Is everything getting better for of or for you for COVID-19? My question, how to control the rude feelings when kids don't follow your requirements? Yeah, that's tricky. You need to get to know students before they'll listen to you. It's a little different than 25 years ago where students just did what the teacher said. Um but yeah, um COVID's pretty much done here. There are still outbreaks in some places every once in a while. But uh I think it is mostly behind us. I'm gonna skip questions that are not on topic. So, sorry if I skip your question. A lot of non not on topic questions. So, here we go. Next one. Case, good morning, the nicest teacher ever. I have a question. Do you think it's rude to give someone unsolicited advice when it's clear that the person does not want to hear it? Yes. So, sometimes parents give their children advice like adult children. So, like if I'm 51 and my son is 24, if I give him advice and he didn't ask for advice, that would be that could be considered rude uh, especially if you do it a lot. Aria Ola, Mr. Bob. Hi, Aria. Good to see you. I'm just waking up from my sleep. I remember you're doing a live stream today. My question is, how can we avoid rudeness in English? So, I did say 
saying please and thank you can make sentences softer. So, if I say for instance, um if I say stop using my phone or if I say please stop using my phone, the second sentence is automatically more polite and less rude. Freddy, the French guy, Bob est de retour, c'est génial. Do you use these words to express rudeness? Brash, discourteous, insolent, impertinent, boorish, crude, coarse, thanks for all. We would use brash and crude would be somewhat common. Impertinent, yes. Uh, the other ones are quite advanced and we wouldn't use them but yes, crude and brash. Crude would be the most common. Ah, oh, he, he's very crude. He says very crude things. Um, very impolite. Uh, let's see here. From Abdi Kafi. Hello, Bob. How's everything going on? I like to get, I like you to get in. I always like it when you live stream from your garden. Anyways, no worries. Have a great weekend. Yes. In fact, next week, Saturday, that will happen for sure. Um, try to get the questions done, but more questions keep coming in. <laughs> That's fine. Jocelyn. Hi, Bob. Wanted to ask about the opposite. Is it a good manner habit or is it a good habit to let the other person leave a call? It happened when I was playing a game with a friend from there. Um and yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Is it to let the other person leave a call? I think so. Like if you're saying I'm on a phone call and someone needs to get going. Someone has something to do. That's fine. Sometimes when you're on a Zoom call with more than one person, someone might need to leave. I would say that's that would be considerate to let someone leave. From Hung. Hi, Mr. Bob. Greetings from Vietnam. What is the best way to calm somebody down when they are angry with you or rude to you? That's a tricky one because it's usually easier if someone else calms them down. Um if let's say one of my children was annoyed with me, it's easier for Jen to calm them down So, it's nice when there's more people involved. Uh, A similar situation can happen in a school. If a student is annoyed with another student, it's easy for the teacher to calm that student down. So, I know that didn't quite answer your question but that would be my solution. Huguet. Hello, teacher Bob. Is it impolite to clear his throat and spit in public? Clear your throat is fine like but spitting like I didn't actually spit. That would be rude in public. In my country, we never do that. I met someone from another country who did that very often. So, clearing your throat like like that's something that humans naturally do but spitting would be considered rude. On a farm though, spitting would not be considered rude. If you were working on a farm because sometimes things fly in your mouth and you have to spit them out. And last question. Julie says, it took me a long time to get here maybe. Still well worth it. Well, good to see you. Good to have you here. Uh definitely awesome to do a live stream. This has been quite fun actually. Where was I going to go? We're gonna go here. Oh, 343 people. That's great. Thank you. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Uh thank you so much for watching. This was a full lesson. You can see shadows in the background because my kids are wanting to leave. I gotta get going for work. They need to get to school but anyways, thank you for watching. Thanks to Dave for moderating the chat. Um I'm not going to have time to say bye to everyone today but bye to John Wedge, Lolly Lolly, Ario, Madi, um Mode Eggs, Freddie Wolf, Vitor, Unsel was here earlier I know. Uh Key Park, Eugene from Etobicoke. I'm just scrolling back. Thanks again to Dave. Um I'm gonna start missing names now. Once you start saying bye, it's hard to say bye to everyone. Bye to Filippo. Um good to have all of you here. Good to be back. New video coming out Tuesday. New video on my short English lesson right now if you wanna go watch it. Bob's short English lessons. Um but I'm going to wrap this up. Have a great day. I will uh try my best to have a good day as well.